Hello, and welcome to Regrets I've Had a Few. I'm Paul Hunter, Artistic Director of Told by an Idiot, and this is a podcast where I talk to friends and colleagues delving into what made them the person they are today. Hello, um, my guest this week uh, is from my past, and it's really lovely to go into the past and remember this person who I haven't seen for some time. Um, but we go way back and he trained as an actor with me. Uh, was a very good actor um, and has now become a rather marvellous agent, uh, a very, very good agent. So I will be touching on a variety of things with the wonderful Philip Belfield. Phil, how are you? Welcome. I'm very well, Paul. I don't know if I can live up to that review. No, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you wow. can. Um, now, if it's okay with you, I say this to all my guests, I'm not going to dwell on the last year of bleakness where we've all been locked down and all that sort of oh, um, God, no. nonsense. But as I said in my introduction, uh, we go a long way back to our childhoods. Um, yeah, the, same, the same secondary school, um, and then bizarrely, the same drama school. Um, or a polytechnic as it was then of course yeah um i'm trying to think my first question is i need some help with something this is uh, what was the name of our o-level drama teacher <gasps> sue fisher jones fisher jones i knew it was yeah double yeah i couldn't because i feel and you you might have a different memory but my memory is that we we kind of got to know each other around that o-level drama would that be right? Yes, definitely. Even though we were in the same year group, I think we were just, we had different friendship groups, yeah. whatever you want to call them. And I think it was the O-level drama that we first got to know each other properly. Exactly. And there and were only the... three of us, I think. <laughs> I think so. They were... <laughs> who, who, was the third, who was the third person? She was a lady, and her oh. name completely escapes me. Well, there was, maybe, <laughs> maybe if she listens into this, maybe. she'll make herself known to Maybe me. she will. And it was, Sue, got... it was Sue, actually, or Miss Fisher-Jones, as maybe we yeah. called her, who I think recommended the Middlesex Poly course, actually. I think it was her. Yes, that maybe absolutely set right, Phil. In motion. Because she also knew... Uh, a performer who went on to work with Tressel called Thomasina. Oh, yes, she did. Oh, God, that, I've forgotten that. Yeah. Yes, and I remember meeting Thomasina because she ended up acting with Tressel, yeah. John Wright's company. Yeah. But you're right, that, uh, Sue uh, mentioned to you and me as we were thinking yeah. about drama schools, that particular place, that is true. Um, now, uh, uh, what... Obviously, we ended up doing the O-level drama, but what... Yeah. What was your kind of connection to theatre before that? Did you go as a family or...? Well, we, I was thinking about this earlier. We, we used to go to the Rep, the Birmingham Rep, quite a bit, but mainly at the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to see, and my, my mum remembers this still vividly, that they used to do shows in the studio there and it was quite interactive. So they'd get the kids involved and I think me and my brother Michael as well. I think we both went with mum and dad, or maybe just mum, I can't remember. And I think it was quite, it was just exciting and quite interactive. And then I think I would, we would just go and see the occasional thing at the rep. I remember seeing a stage version of Wurzel Gummidge, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> but with John Pertwee and Una Stubbs. Oh, gosh. Both late great. So I remember that quite vividly. And then I don't know, yeah. And I think the first big thing I saw that sort of, turned me on to it massively I think was a touring production of West Side Story which was at the wow. Hippodrome which my mum took me to uh and it just what literally... year would the, how old would you have been then I must have been 16 maybe yeah. I think it was quite late really oh there's a cat coming in um, oh I've got a cat as well yeah uh West, yeah it was West Side Story that sort of turned me on to that the musical side and stuff maybe uh yeah. And I'm, I'm, ironically, I've just seen the new film, so it's sort of well. Like it's funny you say full that. circle. Uh, yeah, and when I asked you how old you are, my daughter Elsie is fifteen and is obsessed with musicals. Oh my god! Um, and she's seen, she's been very lucky to see lots of wonderful musicals. But she went with her mom to see the film, and I said she didn't know much about the musical. We kept saying, "Listen to the music; we've got it." At yeah. home. And now, of course, she's utterly obsessed and yeah, plays it yeah. on the piano. And, but I hear, <laughs> oh. but she, but she loved the film. I hear it's rather good, isn't it? 
It's great, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, a, it's not even a reinvention. It's just some. It's it's a revisit. It's definitely an homage. There's, yeah. there's so much that that harks back to the original film. Actually, the great film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it's just great. Just, sometimes I think stage things don't transfer to the screen very well at all because by their nature they're made for live. Yes. Yeah. Audiences and. Uh, but it just really works. It's brilliant. It's, it's ah, really well, clever. that's a nice that's a nice link between the two of us that my my sister, yeah, my I daughter's obsession with it. But um, 15, w- were you in the Androcles and the Lion production? Yes, I remembered that today. Yes, I was. I think. What did you play? <laughs> oh, I think a Roman guard, maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, g- giving my um, yeah. the character was called Spintho. Who was a, a cowardly oh, yeah. slave who was thrown oh, to the lions? Yeah. Wow. Well, there we are. That's a that's bit, of, our... bit of George Bernard Shaw in a yes, in a George secondary Bar- school in Birmingham. Um, exactly. <laughs> who would have thought it? <laughs> who would have um, thought? And then I remember <laughs> you and I getting obviously getting close during the O level as we started to talk yeah. about what it was. Um, and I was talking about this moment in people's lives the other day because of a new show we're making. When you have to, as a as a young adult, uh-huh. uh, reveal something to your parents about what you might want to do in life, oh, could you remember when you told your mum and dad that this is what you wanted to do, and what was their reaction like? If you do remember, well, I sort of do because I think for a while, and I don't really know why. I mean, I'm obsessed with all things medical still, but I, I thought I might try and be a doctor. Bizarrely, wow. I, I, my mum was a nurse for a very long time, and I think it was that, that sort of fed into it a little bit. And then when it came to O levels, you know, what did you want to do? So I had to do chemistry and biology. I think I did English. Did I? Yeah. And and um, the drama was like an extra thing in a funny way. Yeah. I mean, it turned out I failed my chemistry O level anyway, so that was probably <laughs> the end of that. But I think yeah, they were. So the drama thing took off, and the middle sex poly thing came into play. I don't think they were that impressed, really. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I my dad was in the army, my mum was a nurse, so it was, it was quite an alien sort of thing for them. And I think they were like, well, how are you going to, how would you make a living doing doing that? But they did, they didn't stand in my way, as it were. And I remember we had to have like an audition even to get a grant from the city council. We did. We did. So I think they were sort of hopeful that we wouldn't get one. And we didn't first. And then no. we had to go again the following year, didn't we, I think? That, that is correct. Bizarrely. And, and when <laughs> I tell, especially younger actors, when I say to younger actors that you could actually used to be able to get a grant, you know. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. Um, and then when I said, and in Birmingham, you had to go and audition in front of these councillors. I know. <laughs> Men in suit, definitely. But I don't know. I don't know what little connection they had to the world <laughs> of theatre. No. But, um, but, but, but one I, year they I, said no, and then the next year they said yes. So we yeah. both deferred our place, didn't we? I mean, we both it got is. in. It is. And then, of course, then we took ourselves off to London in 1986. Oh, um, yeah. I can, I obviously, uh, um, you know, you, we had a connection, which I think for me was probably quite helpful, arriving in London and going to this thing. Uh, yeah, and I, I can vividly remember... And I'm, um, I don't know what your memory is of that first morning, but one person that stuck in my mind, obviously, was Hayley. Yes. Um, and she, she looked quite exotic to me. She had a kind of hair thing on her hair. And yeah. she didn't quite look like anyone else I'd met. Um, do you have any uh, memories of people that, from that? Well, day I remember Hayley, I mean, you know, luckily we're still in touch. I remember Hayley quite vividly because for some reason I have a memory of, Gold is green. I think I stayed with an aunt or so, for that summer before then. Uh, so I came to Gold is green and walking up that North End Road, that big hill up to Ivy House where the course was. And I remember this smallish, sort of quite <laughs> determined young woman walking up the hill in front of me with the hair thick. And it was Haley. And I just remember that from all those years ago, yeah. even now. And so she's a re- she was a really strong presence and memory as were you because we knew each other and we I think yeah. we sort of clung together slightly yeah I think so certainly in um, that early period but didn't we we even shared a house didn't we didn't well this is what I was going glamorous to, go to say was me you end of that first term wasn't it you me yeah. Haley, Carrie and Mickey down in Gold Swan the other one yes <laughs> <laughs> that's a memory oh, that nobody will understand <laughs> but I I I have obviously 
such fond memories of that time and and, yeah, yeah, and the um uh oh sorry uh, uh, uh we can edit out that out funnily <laughs> enough Cut. we might not want to edit it out that was my <laughs> agent calling phil <laughs> oh no keep it in <laughs> no no keep that in could be could be life-changing <laughs> exactly um we'll come to come agents on. later oh, but um on. i remember uh I remember some great performances you did at college, and oh. I, I, um, I also remember um, really vividly how great you were when I had the crazy idea of putting on Joe Orton's entertaining Mr. Sloan. Oh God! Oh yeah, you, you were terrific as the as the brother. I forget the I forget the character's name now. I think it doesn't matter. Ed, um, actually, I think Ed, Ed. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, and doing that outside, and my first sort of idea of going, oh, I quite like to direct, and you and Lizzie, and um, yeah. and do you, do you have a particular looking back? Do you have a particular favourite role from drama school? Oh, oh God! Uh, well, I remember we did. I think we had like every second year. The end of the second year was always like the end of term, like the, the end of year sort of final show. Though I did that it's not yeah. musical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I should say to our listeners, <laughs> Phil waved oh. his hands at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah, audio only. Um, you gave your Richard III. That's correct, yeah. yeah. And you were and Clarence. That, that's right, that's yes. right, which I did love, actually, because it wasn't a very big part, but it was <laughs> very, <laughs> very pertinent, very important, and rather beautifully poetic as well. But I, So I did enjoy that, and then... So maybe it was, was it earlier in the year we did, I was in a group of people, we did Noel Coward's Hay Fever. Yes, I was in that with you as well. Yes, you were, that's right, yes. Yes, David and I remember, I remember thinking, um, oh, I'll never get cast in the Noel Coward. I'm not the kind of actor ah. that they'll go for. And I thought you would, I thought you'd be very, and also my memory is you were quite into Noel Coward, weren't you? He was a writer. Oh, I, yeah, well, I, I still am, really. Yeah. I would possibly call it a bit of an obsession. <laughs> Just devour it all, really. Yeah, it was extraordinary. Uh, what, what was it that, because I remember us talking probably when we were at school at the O level and you were, re I didn't know much about him and I think I read his biography because of you. What was it that drew this, you, a young lad from Birmingham to the work of an old coward? God, well, there's probably a whole Freudian <laughs> <laughs> deep conversation to be had there. Uh, I don't know. I think I remember having, for some reason, an LP. Remember those? Yeah. playing record. Uh, and it, but it was words and music of Noel Coward, and there was a whole. Maybe my grandma had it actually, and there was a whole section from Private Life that was recorded of oh. him and Gertrude Lawrence originally from the thirties, and a bit from there from the Red Peppers, and and then some songs. I think it was probably that that kicked it off. Really kicked it off. Uh, oh. And I remember. I also remember when we were at college. I think because of Hay Fever, I think we were shown the BBC TV version that Penelope Keith was in, that she'd done on stage and then did on television. I think we just sat in the reading room at the top of the Ivy House and watched the whole of Hay Fever. And I just loved it. It's so witty and funny and... And what, um, what would you say... I mean, I, I also <coughs> think he's an extraordinary writer. And, and um, mm. what would you say the best production of Coward is, or your favourite production that you've seen of any of his stuff? Oh, gosh. Uh, that's a difficult one. Uh, did you see the Andrew Scott? Uh, I did. The, 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 the uh, present and after. Yeah. I mean, that was extraordinary. That yeah. was extraordinary. And I think uh, what directors need to do, or try to do now, is is not make it fusty, fusty, musty, and dusty. You know, it's got to be. <laughs> it's it's got to make sense for now, hasn't it? And I think it does. And it's so witty, and it, 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 people don't think they're very truthful. And I think, but they really are. And I think that was a great production. I remember the. Alan Rickman, Lindsay Duncan, Private Lives, oh, yeah. very vividly, and I bet they I were the, great, weren't they? Yeah, and I remember the fight. They have a fight in the in in Act Two or Three, and it's quite quite visceral, and it was it was quite physical. Um, I really liked a production. Uh, at, I think it was at the Donmar of the Vortex, with Chua Elijah for was it? Oh yes. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was great. I saw that. Yeah, and I remember kind of, I didn't know the play very well, and I remember thinking, wow, when you say visceral, it was an extraordinary yeah. mother-son yeah. relationship yeah. in the play. I think I he wrote that, he, Coward wrote that very early on in his 
career. I'm sure it was one of the first as well. Really? It, that's so emotionally truthful. It, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a bit like Rattigan. It's a bit like yeah, I, I, the exactly. Deep Blue Sea, I, stuff like I, I that. Didn't, I didn't quite expect it. I thought, wow, and, and um, it was very intense. So, um, so, of course, we all finally graduate from <laughs> Middlesex Poly. Um, we did. And where were you acting wise we, was it something you still wanted to pursue or what, no what was i don't going? think it was really I, th I think i think i enjoyed it but i think i enjoyed the people and, and working on the texts and the some of the stage management stuff we had to do i quite enjoyed as well yeah, i didn't I, yeah. don't, I don't think it was i think it was definitely it wasn't going to be a career choice uh it was a yeah it was a funny one uh because just after I graduated, I, I wasn't very well for a little while. Oh, of course, yes. That's if you remember, right. I had a, yeah. um, a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma thing, so that sort of took six months of my life just to sort of sort out and get yeah. get you know yeah. treated, and it all it all worked out very well. So I think that was a bit of a pause, which maybe did make me rethink stuff generally. And actually, I did go back to Middlesex. I don't know if you, oh, did you know, I went back. No, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I started working after, when, when I was better and everything was all right, I, I went to work at the National Theatre in the box office. Okay. For about three years, I think. Um, and I didn't quite know what to do long term. And then somebody mentioned the Middlesex Poly was now a university. Yes. And so many of them were. And so I ended up um, going to see... David Owen Bell and Arthur Husk as well, who used to run the other course at yes. Trent Park. And yeah. um, they were talking about the, the degree course. I think it was a BA in drama and theatre studies and I could put English into it as well. And because I'd done the course previously, I could miss the first year and just do yeah. year two and three. So I decided to do that, 1992, I think. So I sort of went back to Ivy House, back okay. to where we'd been those few wow. years before. And it was a very surreal experience. It must have been very strange. Yeah, it was. It was. And and some um, of the same people were there, but lots of new people, sort of uh, tutor wise. Yeah. Um, I think John Wright was still doing stuff there, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he, I'm thinking about John's journey because, of course, his, his journey then completely tied up with me and Hayley about yeah, five years. Yeah, cool. Five years after leaving. And then I, he was still at Middlesex when, certainly in our early shows, because he used to teach a lot at Trent Park and we used to get free rehearsal space. Oh, yes. That. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, it was funny. It's he, funny. His, 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 his classes were the classes that I was, you, you and Hayley and, and some others were so brilliant at all of that stuff. And for me, I was just a bit like... Oh, well, I think... It's funny you say that, Phil, because I, th I think... Um, I, I think, like, lots of things, you know, you're drawn to something. I didn't know I was going yeah. to be drawn... To John's work, I didn't know what John's work was, no, and I cool. think it. If I'm honest, I think it was that per for me. It was that perfect combination of fear and excitement. Mm. But but mm. I totally yeah, yeah. totally I understand that. why it wasn't for everybody. That's for sure. So when did the kernel of the idea of becoming an agent start to plant itself? Oh, it's quite it's a bit later because I so I did the degree. And I did sort of bits of work in other box offices like the Riverside Studios and the Lyric Hammersmith. And the great thing about those jobs where you met loads of people in the business, actors, mm. directors, producers. And I really think that stood me in really good stead for, for now, you know, going forward and just knowing who people are and, and what they have done. Um, after, I'm trying to think, after that period, I... There was an advert in, they used to look at The Guardian. Jobs were always in The Guardian, yeah. the arts, on a Monday. And there was a job for, um, at the time, smallish dance company called Adventures in Motion Pictures. Yes, Matthew Bourne. And they were looking for an a office assistant, it was called. So I remember going for an interview with Catherine Dore, who ran the company with Matthew. And then I got a recall, <laughs> what a better <laughs> word. I went to meet Matthew in a little coffee shop on St John's Street in Islington, where the offices were. And so I, and I got the job, and I ended up working for AMP, as we, you know, as it was Adventures in Motion Pictures, uh, just as they were doing a UK tour of Swan Lake, you wow. know, the sort of famous and stunning and brilliant Swan Lake, mm -hmm. which at the time had done Sadler's Wells, and then a, it was about to embark on a UK tour, and just before 
Cameron McIntosh said to Matthew and Catherine, let's bring it into the West End, dear. Come on, got to bring it into the West End. And it, the rest really is history for that company. Yeah. You know, it really yeah. turned a corner for them. Uh, so I worked there for a, for a little while, five, five or six years, I think it was. And Matthew's designer of choice for, for a lot of the work was Les Brotherston, is Les yes. Brotherston, yeah. still brilliant Les Brotherston, who you've worked with yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, on productions. Um, and his agent was Cassie Mayer, brilliant, brilliant agent. Um, and Karen, who used to look after Les and that side of the business was, was going on maternity leave. So they were looking for someone to join just probably temporarily. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was probably time for a change and it was quite an interesting world to be part of. So I, I did, I, I, I left Matthew and the company uh, and then I went to join Cassie for ostensibly, I think it was three or four months to cover maternity leave and Karen just decided not to come back. So I stayed. <laughs> but and I really it... think it was a real, that's where I learned, you know, the, the agent thing, that's where yeah. I sort of learned it all, you know, as much as you can. And it's interesting, isn't it? You know, you, like you said, you, like we all do, I think I slightly mm. fell into directing. I didn't have any strong yeah. desire to direct. And you talk about the agent thing. It's not yeah. like a, a plan where you think, right, I'm going to work here with Matthew Bourne and learn here, and then I'll go to, you, you yeah. kind of, I think maybe that's a lot about theatre in general, whatever your yeah. position yeah. is in. That's right. I never set out at all. And, and then, <clears throat> you know, someone said, do you want to come and direct a play? And I thought, oh, okay, that sounds... <laughs> in, in terms of the acting, just before I leave it for good, Phil, before oh, I close please. that door, the, <laughs> do you ever, do you ever ha did you ever have any regrets about not acting more or take, or does that, is that now for No, so I don't think I did. I don't think I did, actually. I, I think... I enjoyed the course that I did uh, and the degree course that I went back to do was was more focused on the academic side yeah, to a large extent. Yeah. There were still lots of great acting challenges there and we still did shows and I had some great fun and, and again met some lovely people that I'm still in touch with. No, don't regret it at all. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, I, I say a lot to people now, you know, I love being an agent, I wouldn't want to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you you stayed with the agent that you uh, that you mm, started Cassie, working with, Mayor, yeah. and then what I was did. the what's the journey there from there to now having your own or doing your own oh, thing? It's, a, it's, it's feels like a really sort of scattered trajectory, really. Uh, so I worked for Cassie for two or two and a half three years, and then I was approached by a production company called Stage Holding, who were a company with offices in Germany and Holland. And, they were coming over to the UK to do a production of Susan Stroman's Contact, which had been a big hit in America. And they were opening a London office to do Contact and hopefully some more shows. And so it was another, another sort of, another diversion back into that world, if you like, the production side. I was sort of not headhunted, but uh, they were looking for someone to join. There were just a group of three to set up the show. So I decided to do that. And I left Cassie, did, did the, couple of years at stage holding got to meet a casting director there called Jill Green yeah. who was casting contact which had worked with Stroman on a few other productions uh, and fast forward a little bit another a, a, an agent at the time called Bronya Buchanan was uh, looking for someone to join her smallish agency to build up a list I think it was uh, she was primarily musical theatre and she wanted an agent to join her a young agent to join her I say young advisedly, <laughs> set, up, set up a list of, uh, of the non-musical actors, you know, to try yeah. and develop that side of her business. Uh, so that happened. I met her. I did it. I did it for five or maybe six years. Uh, another agent joined there not long after me, Mark Ward. And to cut a quite long story short, we decided we were going to fly the coop and do it for ourselves. Wow. Maybe set up a business. Not that we knew how to do that, really. Uh, and be Belfield and Ward. And that was in 2009. Wow. And we did it. <laughs> was it was it quite scary, that notion of setting yes. up on your own? Yes, it was. Yes, it was part. Yes, it was. <laughs> it, was, quite, it, was quite, it was quite liberating. I mean, again, my mum and dad were a bit like, OK, for sure. <laughs> you know. Um, and how did you go? Had to do. How did you go about getting clients? Well... We had, there were a few people that we were working with when we were at the, the agency that I just mentioned that we 
were allowed, if you like, because obviously when you leave a company, there's always sort of situations about what's in your contract, what can you do? It, it's very carefully handled. So we were able to, to, to take a few clients with us. So we did that. I think we had 15 at the beginning. And then... Um, How many do you have now? Oh, too many. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, we're trying to... Th- it's, it varies. Mark works primarily in, oh, sort of mainly on the musical theatre side. And I work on the, uh, a, a lot of that as well, but also on the other, the, the television, film, some radio, the, the straight theatre side, for want of a better word. Uh, so we have sort of diverse lists, that, but we come together, we're, we're together. We know exactly what each other is doing, you know. And how many um, do you have in your team, apart from the two of you? Well, it's just at the moment, because of everything that, we, we were four, just when the dreaded lockdown happened. It was myself and Mark and two brilliant assistants. And then now we are three because one of our lovely assistants decided, as so many people did, I think, over the lockdown, that there was another way forward, life-wise and career-wise. So she trained to be, decided to train to be a teacher. Ah, oh, fair enough. These things. So people... you know, we're, we're just I... now we're just we're just we're just three. A, co- um... a nice compact team. Now yeah, I have yeah. I have to ask you this, Phil, as an agent. Did you watch Call My Agent? Yes, and I was and am obsessed. Yes. Can I say the same thing? I also loved it. But when Hayley said to me in lockdown, oh, you should watch this French thing called Call My Agent. And when she described what it was about, I thought, I have no (laughs) desire. (laughs) But then once I watched one, like many people, I was utterly gripped. I thought it was wonderful, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It it, it was a great piece of... of, uh television and all those amazing stars there's great stars oh, of French extraordinary. tv and cinema that they they tempted what you know to each episode it was just uh, brilliant. it was amazing now also my next question because of course i i know okay. my own agent very well and i go to the office but the dynamics of course in call my yeah. agent is that in any way like your office <laughs> no because they're a much bigger setup aren't they I mean, yeah, yeah they've got a reception and they've got you know staff and, yeah. and, uh, but it, did it ring true think- for you I think some of the, yes, I think it did in some of the interactions within the agency and the conversations that you have that you would never want repeated or recorded or, you know, <laughs> ever. That, yeah, some of that does ring true. I think, th- because I think actors are actors and agents are agents. You know, yeah, I, I don't yeah. think it's a complicated job. I always say it's not really a rocket science, but you have to have your wits about you. Uh, so, but, some of it did make me laugh and some of it did make me cringe a bit. <laughs> even though it's very different, very rarefied, you know. And also, I don't know about you, but part of the appeal for me in lockdown was to see those wonderful Parisian locations. So oh, I quite, yes. I quite enjoy, yeah, enjoy I agree. That. Now, my next question is, I'm slightly nervous. I, uh, I've just worked recently with someone who is in the, going to be in the British version. But I'm oh, a bit okay. nervous about the British version. Well, how do you feel about that prospect? I'm also a little nervous about it because I think partly because when you love something and adore something so much and somebody else is making another version of it I think instinctively you feel oh it won't be as good yeah but I think I don't necessarily think that I think it will be different yeah I, I know I have I mean I don't know if I should say but I, I have had a, a couple of people have um what my ears think for that a couple of a couple of people have met for it you know have auditioned okay. for it so yeah. I know yeah. I, you know I've read a bit of it it's very, I think it's going to be very true to the sort of some of the plot lines of, yeah. the, of the French. So is it, is it is it kind of a episode for episode copy of the French version? I'm not quite sure. I think yeah. it, it might be initially, yeah. but I presume yeah. if it is, they'll then want to take it in another yeah. direction. I, and I presume that there are, I think there are guest stars in each episode. In the same way. As there were yeah. in the French one, in the yeah. same way. I think, I, I don't know, a this is a, pers- a personal thing, but also one of the reasons why I liked it, in terms of the ensemble in the agency in Paris, mm. I didn't really know any of those actors. No, so I, no. I just got sucked into the characters. Yeah. My slight worry is, knowing some of the British actors as we will, yes, you, we you've will. always got a sense of, oh, that's so-and-so, whereas in the yeah. French version, I could just enter the story, you know. Yeah, and I wonder what the appeal will be in a way because I don't know whether is, is it is it a bit niche is it is yeah. it something that people are that interested about but I think if it's as if it's funny good. and as witty then it yeah. then it will draw people in won't it and maybe oh, having sure. recognizable people in it 
helped with that, I suppose. Yeah, I hopefully, yes. Now, one of my final questions, this has been absolutely lovely chat to you, Phil, but one of my final ones is probably one of the harder ones. When sure. you, what do you look for in an actor when you're looking to take someone on? What qualities are you after? Well, I think you have to see that they can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> chances are you will have been to see or have seen, or at the very, very least, know their work. You know, mm -hmm. and which is difficult if they're young actors, you know, graduates, you go to drama schools and, and you, yeah. you see showcases and all of that. I think you have to have some sort of personal connection or desire to work with that person. Uh, you have to know that they can do it. And I think you have to have a sense within your agency or the business where they would sit and how you could work with them and what the industry what the world of casting is looking for as well at the moment i, th I think because it's ever changing the industry is so yeah. it's changing even quicker than it ever used to i think at the moment so I, I, I it's a very personal thing and you know i've been to drama schools when other agents i've got lots of friends who are agents you know i, I believe that's a really nice support network i'm not one of those agents that's like i don't care about other agents i just do what i do i, I think it's really important to know and talk to other agents and sometimes we'll see someone and we'll think he or she was amazing and then the other person said, oh no, I didn't like that, person. that's not for me at all. I think it's a very personal feeling. Yeah. But I think you know instinctively if you'd like to work with someone just from seeing them and then of course then you have to meet them and talk to them and occasionally you might get a vibe that you think, oh, maybe we wouldn't be a very good fit. Um, but when you think I will be a good fit and I want to work for that person, you'll do anything you can to get them to sign with you, I think. Yeah, that's a, that, yeah. I can, I can imagine that. And it, it, on a different level, I suppose it's a bit like when I'm casting. If I'm directing something, you know, you're you're not just looking yeah. for an actor that might be right for the part. You're you're looking for someone, or yeah. I'm looking for someone who is quite open, yeah. is quite playful, because yeah. you know yeah. those kind of those kind and of. It has so, to be a dialogue. I think the agent actor thing is certainly a very precise dynamic in that it has to be a dialogue. It can't be a it's my way or the highway type yeah. thing, or, you know, go here, do this, don't question me. It has to be a conversation, whether, whether it's a young graduate or an actor with years of experience. Yeah. It's such and a I, difficult world. You it is. And, and I think you empathy. make a very good point about how the industry is changing very, very quickly. Mm. And the last couple of mm. years has changed mm. hugely. And I think everybody, certainly actors, I, I feel have to be incredibly adaptable and, and, yeah. and be aware of, things in a way that maybe perhaps people weren't yeah um, even down to kind of technology you know kind of <gasps> speaking about my my generation you know that so th th you have to either be on top of that or have yeah. a really highly qualified yeah. teenage daughter who can yes sort exactly. it out. <laughs> that's what you need self-taping you know, exactly it's, when it and it's not going well. away i don't think that's going to be with us for a, a good while yeah and i, I think, think if, so. it, if it means that casting directors can see more people and you know uh, get more yeah. people in as it were and I think it's a good it's a positive but you have to think, do yeah, you the think trouble is. do you think theatre will continue to go in that direction I know film and tv obviously will but do you think theatre will go yeah. back to live casting or I think it will I think it by its nature I think it has to and I think people that work in that in, in, in that side of the business they'd much rather be in a room with people yeah I think actors would as well I, I mean, think so I mean I understand uh, with film of course i understand film yeah. and tv yeah but i think i, I wouldn't audition theater on zoom I, I need to be in a space with someone and and see what they're I mean, like people have had to people have had to do musical theater auditions on zoom and, and it's crazy self -tapes. it's mad you know backing tracks or a pianist in the corner or <laughs> it's just it's just impossible but now no, that's think, insane you know, it is moving I, now more into that already. People are now getting into the room with all the yes, COVID I think protocols so. and things. So we have to get, you know, get that moving again for sure. I am um, on this. I know musicals are close to your heart, and I, I, they're much closer to mine than I thought they would become. My partner oh. Sarah Jane is an enormous. Grew up with musicals and, and went when she was young, a bit like you. So I love them now as a form. Good. And I, I've Glad seen to hear quite, that. I've seen quite a lot of them. I particularly enjoyed Sarah Jane, and I went to see the. Uh, over Christmas, the cabaret production. Oh yes, great, yes. Which I yes. really, really enjoyed, partly because of how I have how a brilliant it... Anna Jane Casey in that. Oh, oh right, playing okay. Fraulein, Fraulein Koss. She is brilliant. Yeah, she uh, is. All the, all the cast. Oh, it's a fantastic cast. It's a brilliant production. It's so I immersive. think so. 
I think yeah. so. And I, I loved it because it wasn't like how I'd seen it before. You know, no, I'd seen other no. productions yeah, and how yeah, they yeah. turned it into the round and the, yeah. everything. No, it was a delight. A hot ticket Phil, as well, Paul. Good you, you got in. A yeah, hot well, ticket. Yes. Good you got in. Yes. <laughs> a hot ticket, as they say. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Phil, it's been such a delight talking to you. Before we finish, oh, I'm going to ask you a random seven questions. All you need to say <sighs> is your first answer in response to these questions. Okay. okay. Uh, number one, Evita or Phantom of the Opera? Evita, one of my favourites. Nichols or Selfridges? Selfridges. Birmingham or London? <laughs> London, London, just. G Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire? Gene Kelly. Barcelona or Paris? Paris. Michael time. Jackson or Prince? Prince. Shakespeare or Noel Coward? That's a really difficult one. Shakespeare. Love Ooh. it. I thought you'd love go it. Canada. Very no, interesting. I, like, I, do love the, I mean, it's, yeah, I love it. Phil, um, we should do this, not wait 20 yeah, years well, next time. No, I know, please. I know you've got the brilliant, my dear friend Patty is with you, so maybe we can hook yeah, up and see her. We should in do something. something together. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love that. Uh, that'd be lovely. Too but long. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. You've been wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. See you soon, Paul. Dear listeners, if you've enjoyed this idiot podcast, please spread the word 